royal family, uh, the granddaughter of the Queen getting married, but because they know of Zara Phillips, they know Mike Tyndall, uh, they are uh, respected and people follow what they do because of who they are and what they've achieved. Um, Zara Phillips, of course, is a world-class uh, horsewoman. Mike Tyndall is the England rug rugby captain. So people are here for, for you know, royal reasons, royal watchers, sports watchers, uh, and because this is a couple that have been known, have been together for a long time, um, and are very much well known in their own right. And we even have the bagpipes starting up for you. So yes, there's a thoroughly Scottish atmosphere uh, here at Canongate Kirk on the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. I've just been told that the first celebrity a guest, famous, famous, famous face to arrive was Catherine Kelly, who plays Becky in Coronation Street uh, on ITV. So she was the first one there. Well done to her. And a bit of a fashion parade watch as well, isn't it, Philippa? There'll be all eyes on uh, particularly what uh, the young royals are wearing, uh, as well as uh, Sarah, of course. There'll be all eyes on um, the dress. There'll be all eyes on what the Duchess of Kate is wearing. And there'll be all eyes on Princess Beatrice's hat, if she wears one, I guess. Uh, so, yes, there's a, a lot of people looking out for the, the labels, the styles, the shoes, the accessories. Uh, it's kept the crowd going here, I have to tell you, over the last uh, hour or so as well. It's a strange kind of atmosphere, isn't it? As everybody comes in, they were... The, the level of the oohs and ahs seemed to be a, an ongoing fashion commentary just from the crowd in front of Canongate Kirk. We believe that but yes, uh, most very of... uh, positive and... I was just going to say, Philip, we believe that most of uh, the, the rugby faces uh, came on uh, some buses that arrived earlier. There was, a, there was a quite a, a lot of buses arriving. Um, the current national coach, Martin Johnson, stepped off one of them. Also, Sir Clive Woodward as well. So we believe that most of those faces are, are now inside the church. Now, this could be... Uh... So the first of your royal arrivals here at Canongate Kirk. Edward, uncle to the bride, of course. The crowd very pleased by that wave for them. just outside the church after the ceremony, we shouldn't we? Should expect to see all of them. Here's Andrew. And here's uh, Prince Andrew. And here are the princesses. A lot of the crowd have been waiting for this, uh, seeing Beatrice and Eugenie. Is that aquamarine? Quite a fashion statement from uh, both girls. Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince Harry. For many in the crowd, this is the biggest moment. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, William and Catherine, Prince Harry. They're eliciting the biggest cheer yet from a crowd of several hundred uh, packs behind their barriers just outside the historic Cannon Gate. And that hat, I think, is going to provoke many, many commenters. And Philippa, this could be the last time we see the Duke and Duchess of uh, Cambridge for some time. We've been told that uh, after this, uh, they're going to have some time just for themselves to concentrate on married life. Yes, that's we've, we've from senior palace sources. We we understand that after the success of their tour of North America, when they were in Canada and California, uh, the newlyweds deserve a more private summer. This is one of the very rare public glimpses we'll have of them. Perhaps see a little bit of them at the Braemar Games later in the summer, but we're not expecting uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge 
to carry out a full schedule of public duties again, perhaps until the end of September. So that glimpse of, uh, of uh, William and Kate, the new Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, may be one of our few glimpses. Of course, the crowd will be, will be here uh, waiting for them to emerge again in an hour or so. Uh, but for now, we're waiting for the Queen and Prince Philip to arrive, and then their granddaughter, the Queen's eldest granddaughter, Zara Phillips whom we understand will remain Zara Phillips even after her wedding. Another way in which uh, this uh, grandchild of the Queen is uh, very much in the modern mold. Uh, no title, no princess, keeping her own name. Uh, we won't have access to the ceremony to show you exactly how that uh, goes forward, but uh, there is some speculation that she may uh, not be obeying, but honoring her husband, and we'll hear more about that and bring that to you as well. Zara Phillips herself, whom we're just, uh, in the next few minutes, whom we should be seeing uh, arriving for her wedding. She too will uh, be reasonably prominent because uh, she is going to be uh, playing a part in promoting the Olympics, the London Olympics, the 2012 Games. She came very close to competing in the 2004 and 2008 Olympics. Um, her horse was injured just before she had to withdraw from those teams, but she's one of the uh, ambassadors uh, for the Olympics. And I'm just going to let you uh, get the atmosphere here. occasion. Now the Queen will be arriving from her Edinburgh residence, which is just a little way down the Royal Mile from where we are now, the Palace of Holyrood. That, of course, is also where the, uh, the wedding party will go back after the ceremony. So we'll get another, another glimpse, another brief view of the, uh, the bride and groom and the royal party as they go back to the Palace of Holyrood in just about an hour or so's time. And Philippa, I think uh, we're now waiting for Prince Charles and Camilla, uh, and uh, also, of course, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh to arrive, and then the bride herself. Let's see uh, who this is. And the Prince of Wales arriving now. What did the royal Exciting family score points and who got the loudest cheer as they arrived? It was certainly William and Kate, wasn't it, so far? I think I'd say William and Kate and um, the two princesses, Beatrice and Eugenie, as well. First uh, royal wedding in Scotland for almost uh, 20 years, and uh, of course uh, that uh, that last royal wedding was uh, the mother of the bride, uh, Princess Anne, when she married uh, Timothy Lawrence. So they've, they've had a long wait for this uh, royal wedding, and and they're not going to see that much, are they? No, and the, we were told. Uh before the wedding that this was not going to be a public occasion, it was going to be a, a private family affair. We certainly won't have any access to the ceremony itself. Um, and the people of Edinburgh and tourists uh, were warned that, you know, there's not a lot of space here and that the policing would be very strict and not to basically don't camp out, don't expect that thousands of people will be able to get here. But in the... It looks 
question mark. Let us into this car as if the bridesmaids are arriving. You can see the button detail down the back of their dresses now. Doesn't that, that rather reminds you of uh, Philippa Middleton at the other royal wedding? So the bride's party preparing to go into church. Philippa, I can hear some frustrated photographers uh, near you. It's a difficult job for them, isn't it, to get and the, the right snare? And the Queen herself uh, arriving very, very soon. I think we're seen and uh, at the. spends a lot of her summer, we know, in Scotland. I uh, would have been very happy for the wedding to be here in Edinburgh. Uh, spends much of the coming two months in Balmoral. And it's seen as the royal retreat to come back, to come home to Scotland over the summer months after what has obviously been a very hectic year with um, the wedding of uh, Prince William and a very, very busy year to come with all the events leading up to the celebration of the Queen's Own Diamond Jubilee next year. She became our monarch in 1952. And the events of the Diamond Jubilee, of course, will be another. 